Hugwash the Smuggler, a pirate story by John Ryan, read by Jim Broadbent. Best French brandy, eh? said Captain Pugwash. Those four barrels are full of the stuff, and you want me to load them aboard my ship in one hour's time and sail them to England. Exactement, monsieur, replied his companion. Deliver them safely, and you will receive five hundred golden crowns. The light was fading as the two men stood together on the quayside of a small French seaport. The second man was an innkeeper and above them the sign of the golden fish creaked and swung in the wind, which that night would carry the black pig across the English Channel. Excellent, said the captain. I had no idea smuggling was so well paid. I'll be off to fetch the rest of my crew, and we'll be home and dry by morning. And the two men shook hands. <laughs> But as the captain left to find his crew, another figure stepped out from the shadows and approached the innkeeper. <laughs> Smart work, Frenchy boy, whispered Cutthroat Jake. Only it won't be brandy in those casks, will it? No, no, answered the Frenchman, greedily catching the bag of gold which Jake tossed over to him. You are too kind, Captain Cutthroat. Ha, 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 ha! Kindness is my second name! Jake beckoned to the rest of his ugly crew to join him. <laughs> right, me handsomes. We all know what comes next, don't we? <laughs> An hour or so later, the black pig slipped out of the port and began the channel crossing. The barrels were stowed safely in the hold. The mate was at the wheel. <laughs> Willie and Barnabas snored in their hammocks below. And Tom the cabin boy settled the captain for the night with a candle, a hot water bottle, a good book and a steaming cup of cocoa. Oh, this is money for old rope, or should I say old brandy? <laughs> chuckled Pugwash. But you'd better nip down to the hold and make sure everything's ship shape, Tom. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the hold, things were far from ship shape. Open up, all of ye, whispered Cutthroat Jake, and one by one the lid of each brandy barrel opened to reveal a member of Jake's gang inside. <laughs> Right, now here's the plan. We wait till we're way out to sea, and they all be snoring their fat heads off. <laughs> Tom had arrived in time to hear Jake outlining his plan to seize the ship. <laughs> then we outs and chops them to mincemeat, and we takes over the ship. <laughs> Hush, patten down all of it, there's someone coming. But he kept well out of sight, so that none of the ruffians realised they had been overheard. Then he strolled into the hold as though nothing was amiss, and picking up a hammer and some nails, he went over to the barrels. Just then the captain called down to ask if all was well. Everything all right down there, Tom? Aye, aye, captain, shouted Tom, but some of the deck planks are loose. I'm just going to nail them down. Of course it wasn't the planks that Tom was nailing down, it was the barrels but the pirates inside each barrel thought it was the planks, until it came to their turn to be trapped. And by then it was too late. It was still dark when the black pig nosed her way into the remote English cove where Pugwash had been instructed to deliver his cargo. He looked at the paper the Frenchman had given him. 
There's a light up there. That must be the place, he said. Row the barrels ashore, my hearties. Very soon the pirates had unloaded the four great casks onto the beach. Now, up the cliff path, said Pugwash. Two to a barrel, and we'll have to make two trips. And be as quiet as the grave. We must not disturb the excise men. But the journey up the cliff was not at all quiet. All sorts of strange, angry noises were coming from the barrels. Quiet, Willie. Quiet yourself. I didn't make no noise. Oh, you did. You said, oh. I never did. You said, uh. Oh. Silence, Master Mate. But, but I am being silent, Captain. The crew were blaming each other for the noise and they were getting very cross and then making more noise than ever. They really didn't know what was happening. Nor did they know that at the top of the cliff, a party of dragoons, specially trained to catch smugglers, was waiting for them. Ah, they're walking straight into our trap, whispered the lieutenant in charge. Wait for my command, lads. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, 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 sir. aye, aye sir. And a moment later, the soldiers rushed out from their hiding place. Ooh. Captain Pugwash and his crew were surrounded. There was no escape as the officer in charge stepped forward in triumph. Ah. Caught red-handed, rascally brandy smugglers, every one of you. Put your barrels down and your hands up. Ooh. And you, he added, pointing to the captain, you're the ringleader by the look of it. You're under arrest. Ooh. Then Tom spoke up. Please, sir, he said. We're not smugglers. We've got two notorious pirates in those casks, and there are two more down on the beach. Pirates fiddlesticks, shouted the officer. Never heard such a tale in me. But at that moment, a furious shout came from one of the barrels. Let me out! By thunder, maybe the boy's right, cried the lieutenant. Open them up! So the soldiers prized open the first cask with their bayonets. When he saw what was inside, the officer exclaimed, Gadzooks, it's Cutthroat Jake, one of the most villainous scoundrels on the coast! <laughs> Captain Pugwash was too astonished to utter a word. The lieutenant turned to him. As for you, sir, I owe you an apology and a substantial sum of money. There's a reward of a thousand crowns on that ruffian's head. Come, let us take breakfast together at the inn. <laughs> so while the soldiers recovered the other two barrels and hustled Jake and his crew away, the officer and the captain, the pirates and Tom, sat down to an enormous breakfast of tea and porridge and bacon and eggs. And beefsteak and beer because people ate very big breakfasts in those days, and Captain Pugwash boasted like anything about his many exploits. I wonder what story he'll tell about this one, thought Tom. He hasn't the faintest idea what really happened. Ah!